Hello everyone, how's it going? Doctor Incompetent here, and let's play some Elden Ring, shall we? Well, I just got this game today. Uh, I fired it up just to make sure everything was working and made a vagabond and just kind of tweaked around with the controls. And all I can say is I am blown away by this game. I cannot wait to get into it. It is everything I thought it would be and then more. Uh, and I've only played for about a half hour. I'm going to make a brand new character here of the type I always make, which is a mage wizard caster type, and see how that goes in this game, which will surely be uh, heralded as a iconic masterpiece uh, in the years, if not decades, to come. So let's go. <laughs> Now this is uh, the character select screen. Just be uh, aware you can scroll through this going left or right and you can see the different types of characters. If you press the triangle button, uh, you'll get information. By the way, hey, I'm playing on the PlayStation 5 um, and so you'll see controls that our PlayStation controls as a result. All right, so this is what I want. I believe the Astrologer is the Spellcaster. They have a very high mind. Uh, the Prophet might also be, but I kind of took them to be more of uh, a... Yeah, they're a faith build. Their faith is very, very high. They have a good mind also, but they don't have the intelligence. And so we're going to go for Astrologer and just see what that even means here we go. All right, we're going to go with uh, type A, body type. Uh, as far as I understand it, this is, you know, physically male, physically female, however you want to characterize that. And so I like to kind of try and make something that looks somewhat like me. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so here is my appearance. Can, appearance. Can I zoom in on this? Oh, yes. The artwork is always second to none in these games in the sense of uh, it is this just very strange mashup of kind of Western fantasy with uh, through the, you know, the Japanese prism as it's a, a Japanese game. And I mean, yes, I have a, a wizard staff with a kind of magical orb on the end. That's appropriate and I guess I have robes kind of makes sense I look pretty holy um, you know with some of my uh, adornments but the thing that just jumps out at me is the gloves and the lace uh, shirt sleeves coming out of my garment I mean fantastic I've got a cool like spirit pouch dangling down and then that really nice hood with the extra space uh, behind. You know, you could put a carrot uh, or some cheese in that little part that hangs down, you know, and keep it safe in there. I don't know what you're up to, but that's what we've got. Now, if you're worried about how you look in the game, uh, generally in these games, you don't have to worry about that because this may be what you look like when you start, but as you get more equipment, it will change your appearance to reflect the new gear that you get. Now, I should say something at the outset about my experience um, with Souls games. I have played and beaten every Souls game, uh, including Bloodborne, but I have not beaten um, uh, oh, the, the Japanese one, Sajeki, the Shadows Die. I, I don't even remember the title of it. Uh, I haven't played it, but I know it looks excellent. I just haven't haven't gotten there yet with it um and so i've played most of the souls games and beaten them love them and i had a good buddy uh, who was telling me he was playing the game and he basically explained to me that this was dark souls meets skyrim and then i was like okay i was kind of waiting to pick up this game uh because i have so many games going at the moment but after that I was like, I gotta check this out. And then, you know, it's a 97 currently on Metacritic, which is insanity. Uh, so, let's see. 
Alright, let's see if I can be Dr. Incompetent here in the name. I can! And that's uh, that's always a hallmark of an excellent game right there. Uh, age, um, it has no bearing on anything. We'll be mature. And uh, let's see, we're going to be uh, astrologer. It says a scholar who reads fate in the stars, heir to the school of glintstone sorcery. So that's what we want, sorcery. Uh, and scholar. That is me, but a bad one. And let's see what keepsake. So, generally with these games, and I'm just going to be drawing on previous Souls games because that's all I have for experience. Like I said, I did boot this up and play about a half hour with the Vagabond. Uh, got to uh, a couple of what the campfire equivalents are in this game and then just couldn't wait to uh, start making videos. So I did that and I'm making a new character here we go but anyway you get to pick something you start with and you can go none like um, if you just want an extra challenge it says the past has been well and truly left behind but I always like to take something uh, let's see so uh, this gives you a bunch of runes which is kind of like the equivalent of souls or money in this game golden seed which would uh, I think this helps you expand the number of charges you have on your flask. Uh, I don't know what this means. Hold spirits within. Uh, cracked pot. You need these uh, for crafting like thrown items or whatever goes into a pot. And the amount of cracked pots you have determines the capacity that you can create. Uh, as far as I kind of encountered in what I did. And then um, two stone shaped keys like swords... Uh, breaks the seal on imp statues, but can only be used once. Um, five sacred branches charged with beguiling power said to originate from the demigod Miquela. Uh, five pieces of boiled prawn boosts physical damage negation. Crazed likeness of a noble whose eyes have been gouged out. Oh, charming. Attracts enemies' attention. <laughs> So if you want to make it even harder on yourself, I guess. So some of these down here, it looks like there's you only get five of them. And these are like one-use items. So honestly, I might just take the... You know what I'm going to take? I know this is dumb, um, but I'm going to take the Golden Seed as my start. I usually would take something like this, which just gives you more hit points. Um, but I'm going to go with the Golden Seed because I have a feeling that... I'm going to want to be restoring my magic points as much as possible. So I'm going to do that. And then uh, we're going to go into a... Yes, there I am in a loincloth looking... Well, just pretty decidedly average. I guess that's the mature build. That's the dad body. That's great. Um, so you start at level 6. And you can see my stats. And you can pick whatever you want. I'm going to go into the... Um, See if they have, like, any of these base templates look good to me. Um, these are decidedly more ripped. I mean, this is pretty close uh, to the appearance that I like, except um, for the hairstyle, you know? Uh, so, you could just pick one of these kind of things... And, again, none of this really matters. It's just kind of what, what you look like, I guess. So if I choose Seafair and then I detailed appearance. Let's see. Let's change some of this. Uh, what's the voice here? Let's see. Oh, boy. Um, sample it. That's funny. That's good. This is a good one. Let's go with that. Uh, skin color. Uh, if it's going to be me, it's got to be pale. Um, me and the sun. Not on the best of terms. A little bit, perhaps. That's good. Face and hair. Oh, now we're getting into it. Now we're getting into it. Let's have some fun with this. All right. Um, hair. The color is fine, but the style has to go. Uh, this is about right. I always try to make it look like the channel avatar. 
uh, in some way. Let's see what other options we have that are kind of reasonable. This is this actually looks like kind of what I look like when I wake up in the morning, except way more sculpted and styled. Uh, let's see what other options we do have. Oh, yes. Oh, good lord, yes. Now this says... Extremely capable fighter. Uh, let's see what else we got. Oh... Hmm, kind of going for the, uh, you know, the Princess Leia cinnamon buns, but not quite enough hair to get there. I feel you. Um, okay, let's go with this one. Luster. What does luster mean? Gentle or strong? What? Uh... Oh, I see. It's maybe it's like it's shine or something. Okay. Um, all right. That's this is good. This is fine. And then the brows are a little bit disturbing. Uh, they're a little too thick, and they're. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I'm fine with. Am I fine with that? Yeah, that's fine. It's thicker, but not as intense. Um, match hair. Yes, yes, yes. Match hair. Good. And then... Facial hair. The beard is good, but do I have any other options for it? Not really. Um, I could go with, like, the, the, the crazier beard, but this is about right then. Um, okay. Okay. And then... Um, the eyes, there's some problems here. Alright, we need to go uh, to changing the iris to not being red, uh, first of all. That that would be wise. This is good. Uh, can my eyes be the right, the same color? Or, yeah, and then match and be the same size. That's pretty good. This is fine. I don't know what this stuff is. Like, I almost have mascara on or something. My eyelashes are insane. Um, what is this? With no eyelashes? No. This is fine, but... No, that's fine, but why are... What is the stuff going on with my eyes? Cosmetics? Like, do I have eyeliner? That's what it is. Okay, um, I don't want eyeliner. There we go. Okay, um, eyeshadow. Okay, no eyeshadow. None of it. I'm looking normal again. Okay. Now that's good. Oh, you know what, though? You know what would be nice? Let me go back to something. Skin features. No, that's fine. Um, eye patch. Well, that's hilarious. Uh, cosmetics. No. All right. Uh, let me go back. Let me actually change. Can I have blue skin? Nah, you can't. You can have like this kind of bluish skin, but you can't. So I got to go for like, you know, just this. Uh, this looks pretty good. I'm happy with this. Now, musculature. Can I, like, tone this down? Yeah, this is about right. This is more like, you know, I'm, I haven't been to the gym, you know. I've, uh, I'm working on it, is what we're going for here. Body here. That's funny. Uh, I mean, I don't want it to be... Oh, boy. Yeah. This is fine. Um, okay. Accept it. Go back. Alright. I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll with this. This is good enough, okay? I like the beard. The hair is pretty cool. Um, you know, in accordance, 
I'll be wearing a hat most of the time anywhere. Way I can't really adjust my thong uh, enough to my liking, so we're gonna have to just move on and let's go with this character right now. Uh, this is fine. How do I move on? Do I just go back and I just say, I look great, and I say, finish? Yeah, this is fine. Start the game. Do it. We're in, everybody. Okay. The great Elden Ring was shattered. In our home, across the fog, the lands the Eternal is nowhere to be found. And in the night of the Black Knives, Godwin the Golden was first to perish. Soon, Marika's offspring, demigods, that hat is nice, claimed the Shard of the Elden Ring. Hmm. The mad taint of their newfound strength triggered the shattering. A war from which no lord arose. A war leading to abandonment by the greater will. Oh, rise now, ye tarnished, ye dead who yet live. The call of long lost grace speaks to us all. It speaks to me. Chieftain of the Badlands, the ever brilliant Gold Mask. Fear, the deathbed companion, the loathsome Dung Eater, and Sir Gideon Othmir, the all knowing. Generally, those are the bosses. And one other whom Grace would again bless. Oh, there's my magical gloved hand. Catching Tarnished that. of no renown. There it is. It's like the, the grain of sand from Fantasia. Oh, there's my carrot Across holder. The fog to the lands between. Yeah, it's that darn fog. To stand before the Elden Ring and become the Elden Lord. Okay. So here I am, and I start with a spell which. I have Glimstone Pebble and Glimstone Arc. 
That is fantastic. I start with two spells. I'm pushing up to kind of switch between them. I can have a sword, or I can have my staff. I can have my shield, or I can have nothing. I have a little buckler, it looks like. So, you know, the opening sequence is disturbing, as Dark Souls games generally are. The artwork is of staggering, uh, sublime complexity and horror. And this buildup of what you get for lore is sparse, as all of these games are. It's like, you have no idea really kind of what's going on. You get little hints and whispers as you progress through the game, but it airs on the side of just extreme mystery. Now, I understand that George R. R. Martin co-wrote the game with uh, the creator of Dark Souls, and that intrigued me because the lore is, like I said, not unfinished, but it's very minimal. And so let's see if it's more pronounced in this game. Right now, I don't really know anything. Like, I don't know why I necessarily want to become the Elden Lord. I'm just compelled to do that. Is it, Am I trying to help people? Am I just helping myself? You know, what was the Elden Ring? What, who shattered it? Why did it get shattered? What's happening? Where am I? Um, <laughs> there's a lot of existential questions that we have here. And... Um, Though the path be broken and uncertain, claim your place as Elden Lord. All right. Wow, look at my, like, victory gesture. I didn't mean to do that, but okay. So we got a wizened finger. Good, I like to carry around fingers. Now, in this game, you'll see messages all over the ground. And these can either be put in here by the game or put in here by other players. And it's a fantastic mechanic that has uh, kind of existed in all of the Dark Souls, Demon Souls, Souls games uh, in some iteration. And it's developed now where it's like you can rate people and if you give them a good rating, then they get healed and it's all very well and good. I'm going to just try to cast my spell. There we go. So I did something right there. And let's see what this other one does. Oh, that uses a ton of magic, but it looks pretty powerful. So we'll have to see what these are all about. Let's open the door. I feel good about my appearance. So I have to say, when I first booted this up, and as I'm playing, you know, this entry, just a few hours after that, I didn't get what the, everything was you know, all the hype. What's going on? Like, why are people so excited about this game? Uh, in the sense that it just seemed like another Dark Souls game. And I was excited, love Dark Souls, want to play more. That's great. It's not a remake like, um, you know, the previous PS5 version was. So it's, it's new content. I, I get that. But I was like, okay, it's pretty much, you know, more of the same. If you're on the fence about it, just wait. It is not. Now that golden tree, I don't really know what it is. I, I mean, I'm assuming it has something to do with the Elden Ring, but it it looks cool. And let's go find out. So where do I want to go? Let's go over here. Let's go on, you know, these rickety steps. If only I had a rump. Oh, fantastic. So it doesn't take very much time in these games uh, for people to figure out clever and crude things that they can say um, with these messages. The options they give you are generally very bizarre and folks can be quite funny and clever. Praise the dung. Exactly. And then you see the ghost of the the figure doing some kind of gesture. It, it, it just gets very silly. Uh, so I always like that element of the game. But when people aren't just being comedic, sometimes they actually help you and let you know about what's going to happen. So that's always fun to read it. And it's such an interesting experience. Oh my. Oh, 
Oh god, dodge. My god, that hurt. And I'm out of magic. That's a problem. And I'm dead. So, as happens most of the time in these games, there's some kind of boss right in the first area that annihilates you. I hear there's good stuff if you can beat that. I was really close. <clears throat> Just tell everyone I was really close. Oh, God. Well, they're going to roll the ending credits on my beautifully gloved hands. It was fun. It was a fun game. It's a horse. It's Mr. Ed. With horns. And I have to say, this excites me so much. The idea of a horse. Don't worry, Torrent. Fortune is on his side. It's Torrent. That's the horse's name. We found him here, after all. You found me. Beautiful. Here she is. One of his kind is sure to seek the Elden Ring. So you can't see her face, but her voice is... Even if it does violate the Golden Order. ...is like the Candle Bearer, kind of. Just reminds me of that. I don't know what the Golden Order is. I don't know what violating it even means. Got a lot of... Got a lot of questions. I need some answers, but I don't think my hooded head is going to find any answers anytime soon. Well, at least I still got my regalia on. I've got some nice jewelry. And here we are. In some kind of underground catacombs. And there's my flask. So, you get when you start, you get three flasks of Crimson Tears, and you get a flask of Cerulean Tears. And as far as I understand, the, you know, you can push down to switch between these, and the, the red flask is for hit points, and the blue one is for magic, and that's fantastic. And so, it's like the Estus flask, but not. The Cave of Knowledge lies below. I need that. Could this be a message? It is a message. Talk? Oh, I'm talking to this dude in the chair. Brave, tarnished, take the plunge of learning and remembrance. Okay. Recall the arts of war and your warrior's blood. Yeah, I don't really know what that means. I, I thought about just jumping off the side here he says take the plunge so does he want me to just there's stuff in here there's fog I don't really know I feel like if I jump off it's not going to go well for me but uh, I'm going to pretend like it will I'm going to pretend like this is a good idea now uh, using items square to use item Okay, well, I didn't really need to do that, but there it went. And you could switch item. All right. And then there's a cave down here. I'm looking good. Yep, I look great. Now, what blew my mind immediately about this game was the X button. Because you can jump. You could just straight out jump. This is something that's... I knew I was playing a different game than the regular Souls games right away when I could do this. Jumping has always been a really awkward thing. Like, you would get up to running, and then you could do, like, a little hop, you know, but nothing great. Now we got a full jump that you can use to cover ground. Let's see what happens down here. I fell, but I didn't lose any health. Now, I don't know if maybe you can't, in this place, lose health. And we're just in this beautiful pool of water with open graves. Somebody lit the candles. I like what I'm seeing. Enemy ahead. Oh, really? Uh-oh. 
I hope not. Oh, there's a campfire down here. Okay. Sites of Grace. Resting at a site of grace will restore your hit points, uh, FP, which is like magic, I guess, and cleanse any status ailments. It will also refill your sacred flasks. However, most of the enemies you've defeated will be revived. You can find sites of grace by going where light converges. These explanations are acquired in the form of info items and can be accessed from the inventory at any time. Okay. Praise the grace, indeed. Grace ahead, I see it. Touch that grace. Bam! Lost grace discovered. So I'm a tarnished, which I guess is like a dead person. Um, you know, the, in some of the other games, they call it like ho hollowed or whatever. And I feel really human right now. I don't feel hollowed. And this would be a campfire. But now it's a grace site. So similar function, I believe. The game looks fantastic, by the way. Oh, okay. And there's an enemy. I just clicked on R3 to target this guy. He's standing over there. He's got a little sword or something. I'm just going to try to shoot him with this. And he's dead. Okay, so my spell just annihilates that guy. Try rump. No, thank you. Not right now. It's... It's too early in the game for that. Um, R1 is attack. Right. And if I push R1 as a spellcaster, it will shoot my spell. Now, here's what I don't get about the game. I don't know why I needed to attack this guy. But basically, I mean, this guy is lumbering at me as a zombie with a sword. So there's that, right? Okay, he fell down. He's not doing well. You know what? I'm realizing something. I'm not the brightest. Name's Dr. Incompetent after all. But when he said take the plunge of learning, I get it. If you fall down here, this seems to be a tutorial area if you want to learn how to play the game. I didn't understand. I thought he was speaking metaphorically when I first booted up the game, and I just went up those steps and opened the door. So I, this is all new to me. This is nice. It's like a refresher. Blast these guys. And so you're getting like... A little bit of souls um, sorceries and incantations you can memorize sorceries and incantations at sites of grace you must have a staff equipped to cast sorceries or a sacred seal equipped to cast incantations casting sorceries and incantations consumes FP um, okay cool so that's what I'm doing and you can see in the upper left I have a blue bar which is my FP now another thing to, to notice you can change the way that the the heads-up display presences in the game but I knew also I was playing an entirely different type of Souls game when the the HUD is is almost gone there's nothing on the screen except when you're in combat and then there is a compass in the you know center upper middle of the screen uh, a la any kind of MMO game not MMO I'm sorry open world game uh, and that's what it evokes you know and you get the sense I'm gonna be playing an open world game uh, guarding use an armament in your left hand or both hands to guard against incoming enemy attacks guarding is especially effective when done with a shield guarding consumes stamina if your stamina runs out, your stance will be broken. So you can push L1 to do that and use your shield. The green bar is stamina. Alright. I don't really need to bother with it. So I'm collecting some uh, runes when you kill them. And you can see the number. Dodging. You can avoid enemy attacks with a dodge, roll, or back step. Both of these actions consume stamina. Uh, left stick plus circle dodges in a direction for a roll and then if you just push circle while standing there you just jump back so like this is your jump back and then you can kind of do this cool roll and the best thing to do is if you see crates and stuff you can always hold forward and do like a somersault and crack them easily or you can use your sword you know but come on the somersault all right and now they're telling me about jumping, which, yep, I mean, that is new. That's awesome. 
didn't expect jumping. Yes, exactly. Let's wait this up. I didn't either. All right. And you can dash like this. Oh, somebody's shooting at me. Okay, I don't want to be... I accidentally crouched. If you push the left stick, your guy will crouch. Or your gal will crouch. Um, to kind of sneak and stealth. I didn't want to do that. But again... Oh, I, this guy's hitting me here. Can I just shoot you? Yeah. Stop doing what you're doing. Ah, oh, man. Now he's hard to hit. Come on. You don't have to be like that. Hey, let me go get this guy. There we go. Get out of here. He's down. Oh, he fell over. Oh, my. The ragdolling in this game is pr pretty good. So this is something that has confused me that I don't get. Like, he has... He's a knight. He looks like some kind of a knight. He has a tabard with, you know, almost like the the lion that you would see on England's flag. But then he has that green side. I don't know what's going on. And I don't understand why they're hostile, but boy, they are. Boom. Open world game. You can gather materials. You can craft. You can forage. This is the true West meets east in the sense of the souls game getting more of that western open world influence sometimes these mashups do horribly uh, and sometimes they are amazing like they are in this game at least so far in every corner of the lands between, you'll find fruits and flowers, mushrooms and butterflies, and various other useful materials. These materials can be used for item crafting. Okay, so we got some fruit. Delicious fruit. Yes! I don't know why... Did I make my character do that? I don't know why he does that, but it's awesome. Behold, fruit indeed. So much fruit. Alright. Okay, cool. We got fruit. Now watch this. As I dash, you'll notice that in this game, dashing does not actually consume stamina. Which goes with the exploration-heavy feel of this. In, in all previous Souls games that I'm familiar with, I'm probably forgetting some, but dashing usually consumes stamina. So in this case, you can just dash as, as long as you want. There's no limit. It's great. Try jump attack. Okay, so this guy is here. I'm just going to shoot him. Generally, what you want to do in, in these kind of games, if you're a caster, is try to shoot people from far away with your magic so that they don't have their shield up. Because he wasn't aware. He wasn't even ready. And so we just rip him apart. Now, I'm going to push down on my directional pad and push square to drink and restore my FP, which is my spell points. Wielding armaments, each hand can be equipped with up to three armaments, allowing you to toggle between them. Armaments can also be two-handed, making attacks more difficult to repel with shields and boosting effective strength by 50%. So what they're saying is basically once you go to the equipment screen and slot on stuff, you can put different things in your right and left hand and then use the directional pad to switch between them or push triangle plus L1 or R1 to wield the weapon you have with two hands. So, you know, if I push left, for example, I either have my shield out or I don't. If I push right, I pull out my sword or I pull out my staff. And you can equip one more item than I have in my right hand, which is cool. Praise the Tarnished. That's right. That's us, the Tarnished. All right. And, oh, here's a baddie. So you just target him with R3 and then blast him like that. And I'm just talking about if you're playing a spellcaster. I love being spellcasters. They're so fragile, but they get to fight from far away. And they do a ton of damage in general. So you die in a couple of hits, or you kill them really fast. And here's a delicious cook fire. Ah, uh, enemy. That's right. Okay, I don't see any enemies. Crab? Where's a crab? 
Maybe there was one there. I don't see a crab. Okay, so there's a bad guy way over there. This is the bridge that we were... Oh, my spell ran out of range. No, he's still too far away. Here we go. I tried again. There. All right. You see the limits of my spell right there. This is the bridge where the guy was shooting at us from. And we're just going through skills. Armaments have special abilities called skills. Skills are highly varied and range from powerful attacks to temporary effects. Using skills consumes FP. Oh, really? That's all I've got. The bat. Now, what if I hold my... Um... Oh, boy. Um... Oh, that's my pouch. Okay, if you hold down triangle, it pulls out your pouch. And then I'm holding it down, so... That's my skill with... If I... Dual... If I hold that with one hand. Boy, that's not good. Okay, anyway. Um, Alright, there we go. Just messing around with the controls. And, hi, here's a guy who's digging. Let's just... Crouching. Crouch makes it harder for enemies to discover you, especially effective in tall grass. Attacking an enemy that hasn't noticed you will cause more damage than usual. So there's stealthing in this game, which is also a completely new system to the Souls games, which would be any kind of backstabbing um, damage based on stealth through grass. All new. Let's see if I can actually stealth. I'm going to try it. Let me see if I can get this guy. I'm going to sneak. And we're going to go for it on this guy. I don't think I did it right. Anyway. Yep. That was fun. Okay. Batty. Oh, this guy's a tougher one, huh? Yeah. Took three hits. A jerk. Stance breaking. Some attacks may break an enemy's stance, giving you a chance to perform a critical hit. Charge attacks and jump attacks make it particularly easy to break an enemy's stance. Hold R2 for a charge attack. Uh, R2 while jumping for a jump attack. I have noticed that with my fighter type. Doing jump attacks is really good. I can even do it with my staff. That's cool. All right. Let's go. What's this? Stakes of Marika. So that's the Eternal Queen. Upon dying, you will be revived at the last site of grace that you visited. However, if there is a stake of Marika near where you died, you can choose to be revived there instead. Well, thanks so much. So this is the stake right here. I don't know what happened to it. What's this? Oh, it's somebody put a message on it. I get it. Okay. It's like, why is it all disfigured? Be wary of boss. Yeah, it looks like a boss. And the problem is, I don't have any magic. So, yeah. Let me look. Can I find a map? Here's the map. All right, you push the big central button for the map. With the map menu, you can check your current position and terrain and buildings in the surrounding area. You can also freely place beacons of light to serve as landmarks as you explore. Lastly, through your map, you can select any site of grace that you've discovered and travel there instantaneously. However, there are some dungeons and other areas where this cannot be done. I mean, this is fast travel. We are getting some quality of life magic. I can go back to the Cave of Knowledge. And... Uh, I'm actually going to go back here. Now, this might be foolish, but the reason I'm doing this is my flasks are all messed up. I don't have any magic, right? And this is where I was. Now, I'm going to um, sit at this site of grace. And I noticed this before. Okay, here we go. Flasks. Um, I'm going to add a charge to my flask because I have a golden seed. And then we added a flask there. 
And then now I want to allocate flask charges. With this menu, you can allocate the number of uses in each of your flasks. You can have a set total of maximum flask uses. You can decide how many of those are for hit points and how many are for um, cerulean tiers for FP. Okay, so I'm going to shift this uh, to actually be like this. And this might look crazy, but... Uh, I mean, 3-2 might be better, but I'm going to go 4-1. And by the way, I get an extra charge because of the uh, kind of backstory item that I selected, the keepsake. And so I'm going to do this. And I'm going to say cancel. And memorize spell. Do I have any other spells? With the memorize spells menu, you can memorize sorceries and incantations. You must have a staff equipped to cast sorceries or a sacred seal equipped to cast incantations. Casting sorceries and incantations consumes FP. Your memory slots determine the number of sorceries and incantations you can memorize. You can increase your memory slots by obtaining a memory stone. Fantastic. So, um, I have glintstone, pebble, and arc, and that's all I've got. Pebble takes 7, Arc takes 10. They both use one slot. I have two. I have no empty slots. I have uh, 84 total FP. So there you go. Let's go. All right, so we're going to have to fight the enemies again. And there's a boss. I don't know how many shots I'm going to get at the boss, but um, that's a backstab. I'm just going to fight with my sword uh, for a little bit, if possible, to preserve my stuff. Just doing different slashes. R1 is like this kind of light slash. That is the skewer by holding L, uh, R2. I did like a really powerful skewer attack on that dude. Okay, I'm just going to run. Oh, wrong button. All right, I'm going to run so we don't get shot in the face. Uh-huh. We're just going to keep running. And here's this guy. Uh, I wonder if I could just run past this guy. Like, I, I wonder how pursuant the enemies are in these games. I don't have stamina, so I can just kind of, you know, run. Trust me, dude. You don't want to fight. There's no reason. I mean, maybe you do, but... They don't give very much stuff, so I'm not really super pumped about it. Oh, what's over there? Plump sort ahead. Huh. Interesting. So maybe I'm looking into the boss's room from there. Oh boy, I missed. Always embarrassing. Okay, barely had enough stamina to kill that guy. But we got him. All right, so here's this. And we're going to switch back to our staff and see if we can defeat whatever this is. Traverse the mist. And here we are into a nice room with the soldier of Godric. Uh, here he comes. Okay, hi. Okay, guard counters. You can perform a counterattack immediately after blocking an enemy attack. Guard counters make it easy to break an enemy's stance, so you push R2 immediately after blocking an attack for a guard counter. And by the way, that's real. I did that with my other guy, uh, but this guy didn't like magic, so he's gone. Sometimes bosses no likey the magic. All right, fantastic. Uh, he didn't really give us anything, though. There's no treasure that I see. Just a room full of graves. Now, let's go through. His body is even gone. Like, he just disappeared. What a turkey. Alright. Well, I'm glad I'm doing this tutorial area. <laughs> I didn't even hear it. And here I'm back at the staircase. 
so this is what you get if you make it through the tutorial. There's an item here, and it says... First off, well done. Thanks, buddy. We get... Ooh, we get a new uh, emote called Strength. That's fun. All right, so cool. So we got ourselves an emote. And we'll just kind of just somersault off the side here, and we made it. All right. Well, that's interesting. I want to go see, is there any way for me to get up there and, and get whatever is back there? Oh, you can just push triangle, though, and get the heads-up display if you want. Perfect. See, messing around in this area has really found me a lot of useful stuff about the controls. I have to admit, I was a little bit lost uh, before, because what I did was I honestly just didn't understand. When he said take the plunge, I was like, oh, yeah, he means just, you know, make sure you learn about the game. And here we go right up here. But what's cool is you can just skip that if you don't want to do it. We're going to open the door right now. And I got to tell you, this is it, everybody. This is it. It looks doesn't look like it right now. It looks like more Dark Souls, more regular dungeon stuff. But wait a minute. What did we find? We found some Lost Grace. And we can't go there yet. So we found another campfire. And we found uh, the cooperative multiplayer finger severer and tarnished furled fingers. These let you basically um, fight with people, like be summoned by people or summon people so that you can get help on a boss or you can help other people. I don't believe these are the things for... Um, invading other people's worlds, but maybe. And there's a bunch of pots. It looks cool. And then you step on this. You're like, hey, what's going on? I'm on a cool elevator. Yes, you are. We're going up. Up. And this is... These elevators are typical for Dark Souls. Nothing new. You know, pots, pots. Okay, fine. And then, oh, what's this door? And here it is. Limgrave. And this is it, everybody. This is the moment. This is kind of tantamount, in my experience, almost to Fallout 3 coming out of the vault. Or, you know... Skyrim when you escape from the first town and they just unleash you on the world and it's time and here you are and look at this place it's green it's touched by sunlight it's lush and beautiful it's so many things that most of the Dark Souls games are not they're usually raining dark inside and if they're outside it's like you know a thunderstorm or a, just some kind of absolutely desolate landscape. That's not what you get here necessarily. This game is exploration heavy and not in the way that the level oriented Souls games of its past were. And I'm not knocking those in any way. They're fantastic games. But this is when I knew immediately, this is when it all clicked for me and I was like, oh my. This game's amazing. This is fantastic. This is truly something different from previous Souls games. I'm collecting materials. What's this? It's another Lost Grace area. And Guidance of Grace. Grace exists to guide the tarnished and lead them along the proper path. Even now, some sites of Grace retain that power. Their golden rays will guide you along your way and if you can see there's light shooting out of this and if I go to my map you can see the light going through here each one of these are the campfires that I found the sites of grace that I found I can fast travel to them the map is enormous look at that and it's not filled in it's not filled in because I don't have any map I'm just here the map. 
so you can use your map to check your current position as well as the terrain and the surrounding structures. You can update your map with new information by finding map fragments at stellies along the road. And I haven't found any yet, but they hint to you that you should be along the road. You can also use the map to freely place beacons of light to serve as landmarks as you explore. So you can leave yourself little waypoints, beacons of light, and it's about exploring. So already the game has added jump, the game has added stealth, it's added an open world with exploration, crafting, foraging, and yet it's still undeniably a Souls game. Tarnished, are we? Heck Come yeah. The lands between for the Elden Ring? Hmm? I guess. Of course you have. No shame in it. Okay, cool. Unfortunately for you, however, you are maidenless. I am. Without guidance, without the strength of runes, and without an invitation to the round table hold, you are fated, it seems, to die in obscurity. Well, I hope not. So, what this guy is basically saying to us is we don't have anything, and we ain't going to make any progress until we get those Luckily things. For you, however, there is one shining ray of hope for even the maidenless. Uh, what, I need to hear it. What is it? Vare. Take care to listen. Vare. Are you familiar with grace? Sure. The golden light that gives life to you, Tarnit. So that's what brought me back. You may also behold its golden rays pointing in a particular direction at times. I see that. That is the guidance of grace. A path that a tarnished must travel. Hmm. Hmm. Indeed. Grace's guidance holds the answers. It will lead you, Tarnished, to the path you are meant to follow, even if it leads you to your grave. I mean, probably. But that's that's it. So the game is like, hey, it's wide open. You can go explore, do what you want. But if you want to kind of do, like, the main quest, follow the light. Follow the light. Also, I'm just piecing the story together. I'm trying to figure it out. But it, in the opening sequence, it explained that the greater will, which is some kind of god abandon humanity or whatever you want to call this realm, these people once the Elden Ring was broken apart and the children of the queen fought for the, the shards and caused the shattering and so I'm wondering if that greater will through that grace is bringing back heroes little by little to try to set things right to undo the shattering and help us in some way or if I'm just optimistically reading into these things I don't know Grace's guidance will reveal the path forward most certainly okay thanks Farai over on the cliff is that that the right there home of the decrepit demigod Godric the Grafted. Oh, Godric the Grafted. Wasn't Godric the Golden One that they killed first? Didn't, isn't that what he said in, in the story or whatever? Oh, man. All right. So he got grafted or sh something happened? We'll see. But anyway, what I love doing is exploring, seeing what there is. There's some eagles here, I guess. Nah, I'm not going to catch it. I tried. But you can jump. What you got? Messages? Yeah, they are pretty weak. I mean, look at this. There's a beach. There's an ocean. There's islands. There's a shipwreck. What am I seeing? Now, these... This is like a skull or something. Or I don't know what it is, but... I've noticed that sometimes if you break those things open, you can get goodies inside. So I just kind of try to break everything. I don't know why I would fight a bird. But...
I'm trying to. And let's see what the bird gives us. Oh, and by the way, break that with a huge splash. We got a flight pinion. So I don't really like killing animals, but if it's something that can give me an important crafting item, I'm interested just to know how to get it and fill up my inventory. Like, what are these things? I don't even know what I'm dealing with. It's like a kangaroo or something. Thin beast bones. All right. I see. I mean, enormous. You could see the structure that must have been the supports and the buttresses for either bridges or aqueducts or both. There's tree over there, over there, over there, and then there's the massive golden tree there. I don't know what the different shoots of the tree represent. But the game is, uh, you know, the music is interesting. You've got the trademark enormous kind of gothic castle structures. And then you just have a world to explore. And I'm so excited to do that. This guy over here on the road that you see in front of me, this big fatty on the horse with the giant shield, he annihilated me uh, earlier don't recommend engaging that guy in combat. Oh, it looks like my flask is already out, so I'm going to drink. I don't want to be caught with no magic points. And I love how many magic points I can get myself. I am going to try to fight that guy, by the way, uh, with this character, but I want to get to a... I know there's a campfire right up here. Um inside this church, and I want to get to it. Why do I want to get to it? Oh, God. Somebody has been uh, put on display here. Oh, golden runes. This is like, those items are money items. So I want to go here into the church of Ella because of Santa Claus. Lost grace, discovered, fast travel to sites of grace. Through your map, you can instantly travel to any sites of grace that you've discovered. However, there are some dungeons and other areas where this cannot be done. Okay, so again, that explaining the fast travel and the ghosts there that you see are indeed other players. Sometimes you get the sense of other players and it's the... I don't know how much the multiplayer is different from all the previous Souls games, but... You don't really play with people unless you intentionally summon them or they invade your world. Oh, there's a horse or something over there. I can see it in the distance. Oh, no, it's just one of those sheep things. Um, but anyway, just this sense of seeing that other player gives you a bit of community, but also uh, a feeling of loneliness and separation that is just so unique to these games. So let's go talk to our good buddy here. Tarnished. I can see it. Yep. And I can also see that you're not after my throat. I can't even see your throat. Purchase a little something. Okay. I am Carly, purveyor of fine goods. So this is Kale, and this is the first merchant that you meet. And immediately when I saw this guy, I thought it was Santa Claus. The red with the white trim. You know, and then it, it looks like a beard, and then the hat, I mean, and he kind of is Santa Claus. You know, he's he's your merchant. He's got this ridiculous musical instrument. It's like a banjo with a shamisen. I don't even know, like, what's happening. There, there might be a fork on there, too. I'd like to hear a tune. I am of a nomadic people, selling wares as I travel. I see. The land has been tainted by madness since the shattering of the Elden Ring. Yep. It's only tarnished like yourself, who keep things from drying up entirely. Let's say you're a very welcome customer. Cool. So, that's kind of, like... 
I do feel like I want some motivation, you know, and maybe it's just me, I need to make my own story, but, you know, like Terraria and Minecraft, they just drop you into reality, and there isn't a narrative, but it, it's sort of okay, or, or there's very little, but in this game, I suppose I'm a tarnished, and so I'm animated by the grace to try and make things better so I'm kind of like a hero so that's my motivation to help everyone else now this guy will recommend what I should purchase you know if you can spare the rooms you should buy yourself a crafting kit okay a crafting kit allows you to make basic items on your own essential really if you intend to survive out here for any duration I'm hoping the kit costs a bundle and I admit I do take my cut but the important thing is that you survive every customer counts after all mm-hmm so he wants you to buy the crafting kit and we are going to do that I'm going to sell with the shop menu you can spend runes to purchase various items you can also sell items for runes each merchant stocks a different variety of items for purchase so you know in so many of the other games there's a central hub and there's one merchant effectively there's some other spell merchants and things like miracle merchants and things but now there's going to be different merchants and it's like they just took the existing skeleton of the souls and fleshed it out added more stuff to it including more things that you can buy and sell. So I'm going to sell this golden rune for 400 runes. Okay, and now we have a 1,000. And we're going to go purchase. And for that money, we can buy the crafting kit right here. It costs 300. I'm going to buy one. Uh, and then we have some other choices. We can buy, you know, chain armor if we want it. Um, we can buy a torch. I'm going to buy a torch so I can explore. And then we can buy these, like, cookbooks, which give us crafting recipes. Or these uh, notes, which I don't just help maybe give you clues to where things are on the map. I'm not sure. There's also a telescope for sale. So I'm going to just start buying uh, some of these cookbooks. Okay. Fantastic. Okay, my warning to heart. You've made an excellent choice. Thanks, buddy. Item crafting. If you have a crafting kit, you can make various items from materials that you find. Select item crafting from the main menu to make items. You can learn to craft more items by finding cookbooks. Okay. Containers. You'll need to crack pots or other containers to craft certain items. You will not be able to make more of those items than you have containers like grenades, Molotov cocktails, things like that. Container items will run out with use, but the containers themselves will remain. And then there's this uh, forge where you can strengthen ar armaments. You can spend runes and smithing stones to strengthen your armaments. Somewhere in the lands between, you may meet a blacksmith who can make your armaments even stronger. So if I use this and I strengthen armaments, um, you can spend runes. To strengthen your armaments, you can strengthen your armaments up to plus three at a smithing table. And we can meet the blacksmith. Now here, like if I wanted to boost up my staff, I could do that. And it would help me scale up my sorcery by one point, And it would change the attribute scaling from intelligence to C to B. So this seems like it would help me, but it's going to take 200. I can also... Uh, looks like I could just boost my shield, my sword, and my staff, but none of, like, my armor or anything like that. So. Oh, wow. Look at this guy's pack animal. It's like this glistening, you know, long-necked donkey with a cool blanket and all of the wares on on the back it's such an interesting looking creature fascinating um okay 
So, what do we have? Uh, we bought some stuff. With the item crafting menu, you can make various items for materials that you find. You can learn to craft more items by finding cookbooks. So, for example, uh, these are this is what we can craft so far. We can make, like, bolts, arrows, um, fur-calling finger remedies, darts. Uh, this says on horseback, feed to torrent to restore hit points. And so this was the clue that I got right away. Um, which is, it looks like we're going to get a horse at some point. I've never gotten it. Um, and this is about as far as I made it before. And I see this, and Torrent was the horse from the beginning. So if I get a horse, you know, and I'm like Geralt of Rivia, just riding around, uh, it's going to be... I can't even believe how good this game could be. Uh, rainbow stones, like a guide stone. And then we have these, like... Um, explosive items that we can throw and we need mushrooms and smoldering butterflies and a cracked pot to do that of which I have zero and he sells three so if we bought three we could craft up to three is the way I understand that alright and the sun is setting and I am I've just saved it I've just spent my runes actually let me save it again oh and by the way last time I was let me see if I can praise the Elden Ring. Indeed. I swear, I don't know what it was, but... Um, maybe not. Alright, I'm going to go back here, and I am going to rest. And then see if I can fight that knight. Let's just see if we can take him. I had no chance with my Vagabond. But I'm wondering if with magic, I have a little bit more... Uh, of a possibility. It just depends on how much damage I actually do to this guy. A little bit. Oh no, he has magic himself. So he's even harder. Okay, he's almost one shot me there. That wasn't pleasant. Oh my. That's my body getting tossed. No, he's far too difficult. One day. I was curious to see. I did much better than I did with my previous character, but still too hard. So we died. Upon dying, you will be revived at the last site of grace that you visited. You will drop any runes in your possession at the site of your death. If you die again before reclaiming those runes, they will be lost forever, which is the soul's loop. The compass at the top of the screen indicates the direction of the lost runes. But unlike, you know, some of the other games, you don't lose, like, a portion of your hit points when you're hollowed. And so you don't have to worry about, oh, I need to be in human form, and I don't want to die, and I don't want to be hollow, and you ought to do. Doesn't matter. You get him back. By the way, I'm just going to gather this. Absolutely. And we're not going to fight that guy. We're just going to calmly get our stuff back. I didn't even have to. I mean, I had 84. It's not like that was a lot, but... Yeah, we're just gonna move on and pretend that that did not happen. We killed a weird sheep thing. And I wanted to see if it dropped a certain item or anything, but not really. Okay. So let's run around and look. Let's just explore. I have to say, part of me is like, I want to just go to follow the golden light. And then the other part of me is like, I want to buy all of the crafting stuff that this man, Kale, is selling me. So I need to make money. I need them runes. How do I get those sweet runes? Well, I'm going to explore. And, okay, we found a lake. And weird pods. Okay. And... A 
That's dead. Yeah. Alright, cool. Got him. And then... The last time... There we go. I did this with my other character, and these things... I don't know if they spawn the bugs, or where those guys come from. And we got a great dragonfly head. Alright, let's see what that is. I got a great dragonfly head. With the inventory menu, you can browse the items you're carrying, drop them on the ground, or throw them away. You can also use tools from the inventory menu. Um, okay. So, what I meant to do was... Uh, I want to look at... Not tools, really. I want to go back. Inventory. What did I find? No. I know I found something else. Here we go. Uh, this great dragonfly head. Oh, okay. You can make, like, an antidote for poisons. That would be good. Those big ball, th like, things. Oh, mushroom. Cool. These things poison you if you stand in their cloud. Oh, he's got something. What has he got? Strip of white flesh. Delightful. Thank you. I've been looking for that. And what is this? There's something on the ground here. Oh, you know what this is? Yes. See, whenever you see, like, a shiny skull like that, um, break it. And I swear, there's, like, there's money inside. That's what we just got. We got runes. Money. All right. So here's, like, more of these knights. And they're just kind of patrolling the road. And they are hostile. Like, make no bones about it. They want your blood. There's a deer. It gives you five. Um, what does he have? He has bolts. Thanks, buddy. All right. I don't really want to fight animals unless I have to for crafting. I always like to see what things drop, but... I just like animals. I don't like fighting them. Alright. I'll take this row of fruit. Oh my. Okay, so this is like an animal skull. Let me break this up. Oh, I missed. That's... Okay, I'm missing. Can I hit it with this? No. There we go. Nothing in that one. Alright, man, it's not glowing, so I guess that makes sense. Oh, look at this guy. It's like, I don't know if this is a bat or like a baby dragon, but let's go talk to it about magic. Oh, I have no magic. Well, that's a problem. Oh, my. Okay. Did I hit you? Yeah. Okay. These are more than one spell. But... Uh, this is something that's also really cool. So if you kill an enemy group, it will replenish your flasks. The number and type of flasks to be replenished varies depending on the group. You cannot replenish more than your maximum. So, that, you know, uh, I think I just got an extra... Let me open up my... Yeah, I just uh, got a charge of my Cerulean flask right there. So I just got more MP. So that helps you kind of stay out in the field longer. And we got a golden rune, so we got some money. That's baller. Alright. I probably want to have more healing. At least two healing, you know. Oh, here's a skull. Oh, there's a bunch of enemies down there around that bonfire. I'm telling you. I mean, just... I'm overwhelmed by the game, and I want to just go everywhere. It's so cool. Alright, let's see. I mean... You know, if the game wants to layer history, I wish I knew. Like, what is this civilization that I see these ruins from? And, you know, how long ago was the shattering or the breaking of the ring or whatever? Recently? Or, you know, millennia ago? Now, I'm going to check my map. And... It's pointing me this way. 
And here's the road. So they said follow the road for the map. I'd like to fill in my map if I could. Hi. Oh, you. Hi, buddy. Okay, he fell. He's not here anymore. He did. He tried. Oh, I accidentally shot at this beast. That is not what I intended, but here we are. Dealing with it anyway. All right. Um. Oh, look at this guy. He's just chilling by the campfire. I'm sorry, buddy. I'm an evil spellcaster. Not really evil. Kukuri, or Kukri. So these are throwing daggers. I'm just sinister because I can hit you from far away. Okay, you got me. Good for you. That's what I get. He hit me with his torch, too. And he gave me some bolts. Thanks, buddy. Dead. He is dead. I got some mushrooms. And here's a cave. The Groveside Cave. Wolf pack ahead. Indeed. All right. So this is a gray spot. And then there's also... What is this? Summoning pool. In each area, you may find effigies of martyrs. These effigies are summoning pools. You'll find it easier to summon other players at these locations as co-op and hostile summoning signs created with small effigies gather. Oh, okay. So this is like if you want help, it'll be easier to find it here or you make your own pool to just kind of collect. Interesting. Okay. All right, let's just see what's in here. I'm gonna bring out, um, oop. Didn't I buy a torch? Let me go to equipment. Uh, with the equipment menu, you can swap armaments, arrows, bolts, armor, talismans, and items. You can equip up to three armaments, each to your left and right hands. These actions, uh, the action each armament performs will vary based on which hand is wielding it. Fantastic. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm actually going to equip a torch uh, in my offhand. So there we go. Oh, gosh. Cool, we have light. Uh, so I have my sp staff out so I can cast spells. And now I can see. Be wary of pack. Yeah. So I did do this caves. There's wolves down here, and there's a bunch of them. So you gotta be careful. The one that is not dying, this is like the mama wolf. Oh boy. We're getting... Running into all kinds of problems. Here we go. Oh boy. Oh boy. Embarrassing. There we go. Got it. Okay. And we got some bones from the beast. And I'm going to try my other spell. And just see if it's more helpful. It does 165 a cast. Is there are there any more wolves? Let me just see what Pebble does. Oh boy, hi. How are you? That does 131. Yeah, so Arc just does way more. It costs a good deal more. Um, ooh, we got a crack pot. So this is what you can use to make the uh, like the fire bomb thing. You need these crack pots for that, at the very least. We got moss. Item ahead. Thank you. Yep, so we're just gathering cave moss. Oh. Are there... Oh. Luckily that guy didn't come fight me. 
So, glowstone. Fantastic. We got cave moss, glowstone. Silver firefly. Nice. I'll just take all of these silver fireflies. I don't know what they are. Item ahead. Yep. What do you got? A golden rune. Ooh, more money. <laughs> Likely just getting started. Indeed. God, look at this guy. He looked like he was a monk or something, and he was in here, you know, meditating or praying. And then what happened in here was it looked like there were some knights that were kind of setting this place up as their little smuggling hole or just a base of operations, and then they got overrun by wolves. So there's a lot of, uh, a huge battle of control being fought here. Okay, and we knocked that dude down. And by dude, I mean wolf. Rump. Maybe not. Sleep. Could be. Try jump attack. Why is it always a dragon? Alright, so there's fog here, which means this is a boss uh, of some kind. And I'm going to just tell you honestly... I'm not ready for a boss. And so I'm going to leave that there and come back later. I'm pleased to get the items that we did get. There's some more over here, in fact. Uh-huh. But at this point, I think we bail. I have what? I have a thousand uh, runes. I believe that it's time to just uh, quick travel back to the church. Now, I tried this before uh, when I did this. And you can't travel. Um, like, for example, right here, I don't know if it's going to let me travel. You can, but if you're deeper in the cave, you can't. Like, it doesn't let you... Uh, quick travel from inside. So the game does warn you that sometimes quick travel is not available. But luckily this wasn't one of those times. Alright, Santa. Wait. Weren't you... Well, you're back. Care to buy something? I think he has that reaction when you die. And he's like, weren't you just killed? Well, good to see you. Alright. I want to sell you. I have three of these that sell for 200. So we're going to sell all three of these babies. Now, normally in Souls, you want to keep items like that that uh, you can use for Souls until you need them. Uh, or runes, I guess, in this game. Because when you die, you don't lose your items. You just lose the runes that you have as currency. So you can preserve them there and save them from death. But I'm going to be spending all of my runes right now. I have 1,600, uh, so I want to buy as much stuff as I can. And so, let's see. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to buy um, this, right? And then I'm also going to buy... I don't know what any of this stuff does. I'm going to buy this one, and I'm going to buy this one. And then uh, I'm going to take... Goodbye. Nice to do business. It was. I'm going to actually strengthen some stuff. Oh, I got a smithing stone. Cool. And I'm going to use the smithing table to strengthen uh, my astrologer staff. Additional items required. Oh, it takes one more smithing stone. Oh, okay. Well, then I can't do that. So then cancel that dream. What is it? Still going to purchase something? Yes, we're going to purchase stuff. All right. So I'm going to buy from him... Uh, Let's just buy two more pots. That seems good. I'm happy. There are others of my people who yet survive in these lands. Cool. If the mood takes you and you meet one, then offer them some trade, won't you? All right. People, wanderers all have long been spurned by the grace of gold, which is why we cannot settle 
but instead are forced into this pitiful, unceasing journey. But thanks to that, things are not so different for us now. Though the Elden Ring is shattered, I think this makes us kindred spirits of sorts. Your people, the Tarnished, and mine. I'll take it. I'll take being Goodbye. kindred with anyone. In this desolate world. Alright, we're going to rest at the side of grace. I'm going to restore everything. And we're going to go ahead and leave. Alright. Now this is the road. And I'm going to follow the road. And we see a baddie. Oh. I gotta tell you what. Pebble does more damage to this guy than my arc. Interesting. Alright, we'll just run this way. Mm-hmm. Uh oh. Uh. This guy's, like, on the lookout. Hi. Good to see you here. Okay. I don't know what that's a statue of. There's a huge gate right there. Goodness gracious. I mean, that would take so long to build. What are they trying to guard, huh? Hey, there's somebody dangerous out there in the woods. It's me. Okay, let's see here. How many baddies do we have in this campsite, huh? Here's one. This guy made it. All right. Okay. Hi. You look nice. Oh, you are. Oh, he's tough. Oh, he outsmarted me there. Oh, wow. You can, like, multi-attack with that. I didn't realize that was a possibility. All right, let's try arc. Okay, that was... You got me. You button-hooked me. This guy's kind of tough. i tell you what, though. If I can catch him when he doesn't have his shield up, that's when the magic happens. I mean, quite literally. There he goes. Get out. Ooh, look. I mean, I don't know where those things come from. Godric Knight Gauntlets. Well, that's cool. I can't use that. But, ooh, I'll take the materials. We got some flowers. That was challenging for us. I have, like, a a buff on myself that was, like, that statue. So maybe that statue is... I don't know if it was one of those places where you resurrect. It's not a fire. Um, or not. But anyway. My, my flask is running low. Yep, here's another one. Oh boy, that was bad, but... He had bolts. Alright, so this is the Steli. This is the only Steli I ever found uh, right here. And you get a map of Limgrave West. And here's this guy who's like, hey, you can't have my map. And I'm like, please, I need to know. And he's gone. And if I look now, a new map has been found. Oh, wait, there's a bad guy here. Okay, somebody's coming. I was going to look at the map. 
And then this guy. He's got a shield, too. Oh, I'm, I'm out. That's... I like how I scratch my head, like, uh... Your guess is as good as mine here, dude. But this guy's not as strong as the other guy. And he's gone. Alright, let me look at the map. Look at this. Yes. I have a map. It looks awesome, too. So I'm going to teleport back to the church. And now, officially... In, I mean, with the exception of the tutorial, which I had never done before, this is the furthest I've ever been in the game. And I'm super pumped about it. I love playing a spellcaster. This feels so much better to me. And I am thrilled back. to have the map. Care to buy something? I do care to buy. So can I sell you? I have two things to sell. Right? What do I have? How many? I have 875? Ooh, nice. So if I sell then these, both of them, right, I can buy from him this final cookbook and then get basically I have all of his crafting recipes. I have his torch. I have these two items. I don't have the telescope and I don't have this crack pot. Those are the two other items that I really like from this guy. So we can get those pretty easily. Goodbye. Nice to do business. Indeed. It was wonderful doing business. And I'm going to go back here and I'm going to rest at the site of the grave. Fantastic. Awesome. Well, everyone, this is a perfect place to end this first episode of the game. We created our character. We did the tutorial. We got the first map segment. We purchased a bunch of crafting items. And I'm having a blast. This game is... It feels epic. It's control, graphics, atmosphere. Everything is firing on all cylinders. I am super stoked to do more. I would love to chat with you all in the comments below. Anything at all. Have, are you playing the game? Are you enjoying it? Are you thinking about playing the game? What would you like to talk about? I'm down um, to chat this game in terms of what you think, what the expectations are, what kind of character types there are, what do you think about playing a priest, a, you know, a, a sorcerer or a, a, a thief, a stealthy character, a melee character, samurai. Man, there's so much to do. Um, I want to thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have an excellent evening or day, and I'll check you next time. Take care.